Nebraska won the toss and deferred. These two teams among the best in the country in kickoff returns. And it's Jordan Hall back deep with a kick from Brett Maher. About six yards deep in the end zone. And Hall did not run it in, out. And we are pleased to welcome Janine Edwards. Well, Sean, to quote Ohio State head coach Luke Fickle, the team is a little shell-shocked right now. The hits just keep coming for a Buckeye program that's been under an ongoing NCAA investigation and, as you mentioned, has seen additional player suspensions just this week. We're really counting on having those guys back in tonight's lineup. So Fickle told his guys, look, I'm going to cite the great John Wooden. Don't whine, don't complain, don't make excuses. And he told me, yeah, our stomachs are in knots, but we've had an enthusiastic tone this week. All we need is one good play to create a spark. Sean? They need big plays. The question is, do they have playmakers? Braxton Miller, the true freshman, with a flag down, hands it off on first down to Jordan Hall straight ahead. It's a delay of game penalty. Going Delay against the Buckeyes. Offense. Five yards. Repeat first down. Please reset the game clock to 15 minutes. And that's a rough way to start. Yeah. You'd think they'd be ready to go with the first play from scrimmage. Shouldn't take long to figure that one out. <laughs> you had all week to do it. Especially coming from the sideline. John O'Neill is the referee tonight leading this Big Ten crew. So first and 15. The Ohio State offense. 108th in the country out of 120 in total offense. Hall again. Spins off the original hit. Gets three. Damian Stafford made the tackle. Time for tonight's impact players. Jordan Hall is their leading rusher, just 72 yards per game. Jake Stoneburner is the leading receiver with 10 catches on the year. When your leading receiver averages two catches per game, it's not good. And they do welcome back Mike Adams. He was among the four players they were hoping to get back tonight. who were suspended as a result of the original scandal that rocked this program. The memorabilia for tattoos and cash scandal. Miller with time throws a knuckleball, but it's caught for a first down and more. Corey Brown across the 35, dragged out from behind by Austin Cassidy at the 39-yard line. It wasn't a pretty-looking ball, but it was on target to Brown, a sophomore who's just returned from injury this week. And, Sean, it was well protected because it gave him an area to be able to step up. And getting Brown back helps because he's one of the guys down the field who can actually beat press coverage. Part right, of a very young receiver group without Devere Posey. Miller completing 51% of his passes for the year. Was not the starter at the beginning of the year. Played behind Joe Bosman. And Hall dragged down at the line of scrimmage by one of the best linebackers in the country, Levante David, certainly an impact player on that Nebraska defense, along with Jared Crick up front, who has a chance to be a three-time first-team all-conference selection if he wins that honor in the Big Ten this year. David set the school record for tackles last year with 152 and leads them again this year. And their defense should be better in recent weeks with the return of Alfonso Dennard, they believe is one of the best cornerbacks in the country. Second and 10, Nebraska brought a blitz. Miller dumps it off in the flat. The fullback, Zach Boren, has a first down. And already, Matt, a much better start offensively for Ohio State than what we saw last week. Very little sustained offense last week against MSU. But Sean, this is smart. This is Jim Bowman, the offensive coordinator, using what he's got. And what part of what he does have is a mobile quarterback. So use it to your advantage. And not in terms of running all over the place, but you can use dash and rollouts and that type of thing to buy some time and take more pressure off your offensive line. It was an ultra conservative game plan last week against the blitzing bunch from East Lansing. Flag down, it looked like Nebraska was offside. Miller, who's a good runner, spun out of bounds by Alfonso Dennard. Gain of about six, maybe seven. But if it is against Nebraska, you would think they'd probably take the penalty at first and five instead of second and four. And based on where they're marking, it might be second and three if they take the play.
this is the guy this is the type Outside. of start Defense. they need Sean. five yards from the previous spot repeat second down a week ago Ohio State offensively was I mean you just you can't put up enough bad adjectives and only 178 total yards, 39 yards rushing in part because the sack yardage comes off the rushing total. And they punted 10 times. They did take the penalty. Hall bounced left and then back toward the middle. They'll give him the 40-yard line. He comes up a yard short of the first down. Jim Bowman has taken plenty of criticism as the play caller. But in fairness to Bowman, particularly when you look at the wide receiver position, the quarterback, Lots of youth and inexperience and very few proven playmakers. And so to me, that falls on the offensive line. And, and, and in order to play inside there, you have to be able to identify things and then communicate it. And that falls on the center, Mike Brewster. Second down, a short two. Hall fighting toward that first down yardage. Looks like he's going to get a good spot from the official on the far side of the field. Levante David, Damian Stafford. The tackle, but it is a first down for Ohio State. Sean, last week, this Ohio State team, you mentioned it, nine sacks, and they basically fell apart. Now, you get your left tackle back, Adams. They reconfigure the offensive line, but I mentioned Mike Brewster. If you can't see, you can't play in the offensive line. You see him right there. He's identifying, and now he has to communicate it to the rest of the line so everyone's on the same page. Ball again, hit behind the line and chopped down by Levante David, who's off to a great start. Carl Pellini, the def defensive coordinator, says that David is as instinctive a football player as he's ever been around. Well, you can see him inside. Not only is he instinctive, Sean, he's got great, great speed. Now, in instincts, part of that, you have to read your keys, and then, then you have to play football. Defense is about discipline first and then making a play. He does that well. He's from Miami, Florida. Eighth play of the drive for Ohio State. Second and ten. Miller well protected. Steinkuhler got taken down on the rush. And Miller got back to the line and then got gang tackled by a group led by Will Compton, inside linebacker. There's Will Compton, and what Will Compton does is a very patient player, and he's a good reader. And for him to play well, the guy who's got to play well is Jared Crick. Crick inside has the skills to be an All-American. But last week he did not play well. There's a little out of balance right there. He has to bring his A game every week. And a week ago, he did not. This is a big, this is big for him this week. He got dinged up in that game against Washington three weeks ago. Really hasn't been the same since. Miller. Going to try to run for it. Good decision. First down. Shot down inside the 30 by Lance Thorell. He comes in in nickel and dime situations. And a part of the maturation, Matt, of Miller is knowing when's the right time to pull it down and use his good running skills. There's no question. And, Sean, they gave him coverage, which is a departure from a week ago. We saw Michigan State. We called that game. They brought blitz after blitz. And they just forced him to the middle of the pocket with numbers. This time they just come with four and gave him coverage. He saw the hole and took it. Carlos Hyde in a tailback now behind Miller. Nice opening, time consuming drive for Ohio State. Hyde's first carry off right tackle. He gets down inside the 23. Well, getting the left tackle, Mike Adams, back is big. He was first team all conference last year. They've reconfigured the line a little bit. Jack Muhort moved from left guard to right guard. Andrew Norwell, who was a tackle, moves in the guard. They should be better with this configuration. Well, just first glimpse in this first drive, this is they are much more physical right here than they were all of last week. They are winning the battle at the line of scrimmage coming off the ball against Nebraska. Hyde and Hall on the field together. Miller faked it to Hall, being pursued by Cameron Meredith. Miller covering a lot of ground. He got walloped about two yards short of the first down by Levante David and Sean Fisher. But instead of last week, when it looked like runs of desperation from Braxton Miller, I mean, he looks confident on the scrambles tonight. 
And he has to pull it down, as you saw right there. There was good coverage down the field, and then he pulled it down and used his feet. He's, he's a talented young player. It's just going to be experience. Every rep he takes is another notch towards getting better. He's rushed for 16 yards. He's two for two passing. Big third down and two. Flag down to stop the play. It doesn't count illegal procedure against the Buckeyes. Third and seven. Young mistake. Five yard penalty. Two, third down. You get to the line of scrimmage, you got to be under control all the time. And then your cadence has to be the same all the time. And you have to be in rhythm with your offensive line. And then when you get up there, you just, it just, you can't, you got to be consistent all the way across the board. And they've had four first downs on this drive. They had just 12 in the entire game last week. They had virtually no offense until their last offensive possession when they scored. Their only points of the game. Ten seconds to go. On third and seven, they are in field goal range. Miller zips one incomplete. Looking for the tight end, Jake Stoneburner. And there are many, including the two of us, who have wondered why they haven't tried to use him more because he is a proven playmaker. And yeah, that would be the guy you'd like to, to get the ball to. Now, not they don't do a really good job of separating their receivers. But I got to tell you, Sean, there's another instance. Well protected, had time to be able to see. Now it's going to be on his receivers to be able to get separation. Drew Basil attempting a 41-yard field goal from the right hash mark. And it is good. Well done by Basil. He's now six out of eight for the year. They took up more than half the first quarter clock with a 56-yard drive that ends with three. Nice opening drive for Ohio State. Last week they did not score in the game until 10 seconds remained in the fourth quarter. They had 178 yards total. Matter of fact, Matt, I remember at the beginning of the fourth quarter we were speculating about whether or not they'd have 100 yards yeah. of offense for the game. 61 on that opening drive. That was impressive, especially by the freshman Braxton Miller, using his feet to buy not only time but gaining yards on the ground. The leading kickoff return man in the country is back deep for Nebraska. The freshman, Amir Abdullah, averaging 35 per return. Brought one back 100 for a touchdown earlier this season here against Fresno State. Drew Basil's kickoff down to Abdullah at the 11. And he's proving that these kickoff return skills are not a fluke. He's already had the top two kickoff return games in the history of the Nebraska program. He's playing in just his sixth game as a Husker. Dominic Clark took him down at the 46-yard line. Sean, not, not as electric as Johnny Rogers, but maybe just as effective. There's Taylor Martinez. 50.5% for the year. He's had only one game out of five this season when he completed more than 50% of his passes. Tosses it back to their leading rusher, Rex Burkhead, who's averaging 103 yards per game rushing. There was a flag on the last play. Burkhead is second in the Big Ten in rushing, 26th in the country. Not only Denard Robinson of Michigan in the Big Ten, Jamal Turner is a true freshman emerging as their leading receiver. And we've already seen the impact Abdullah can have. Right on his average of 35 yards per return. Face mask was the call against Travis Howard. They tack it on to the end of the play and the ball's at the Ohio State 36 already. Burke had again running left and banged out of bounds by Bradley Roby. Redshirt freshman quarterback. Ohio State, traditionally one of the best defenses in the country, and they've been solid again this year with John Simon, the veteran leader up front, and Andrew Sweat, the team's leading tackler. He had a career-high 10 stops last week against Michigan State. A couple of veterans on an otherwise young defense. Catch is made by the tight end Ben Cotton. Short gain to the... 35-yard line, tackled there by Tyler Moeller. Sean, this is what Nebraska really wants to stay out of, is third and long situations. 
Taylor Martinez is not very effective throwing the ball probably past the 15-yard mark. A better short and intermediate thrower. A work in progress with his mechanics. Dumps it off short to Burkhead, and he's wrapped up immediately and tackled out of bounds by J.T. Moore, a defensive end. So Bo Pelini with the decision to make. From here, it would be about a, where are they going to mark it? They're still placing the ball down at the 33-yard line, so it would be about a 50-yard field goal. Maher has the leg to do it, so they're going to try it. He is 9 for 11 for the year. Both of his misses have been from 50 yards. He's also kicked a 50-yarder. Junior from Kearney, Nebraska, in his first year as their place kicker and putter. And that is right down the center. Wow. He is good. <laughs> Taking over for the All-American, Alex Henry. Now with the Philadelphia Eagles. So is the kick. Each team's had it once. Each team. Homecoming weekend here in Lincoln, Nebraska. Last night, the homecoming parade rolling down 16th Street. Festive scene here with the first points on the board for Nebraska, the release of the balloons. You can see the wind blowing from right to left as we look down on it. Behind, Brett Maher, who just kicked a 50-yard field goal. We've had some light off and on rain here. And it's falling still. 70 degrees of kickoff. It's been uncharacteristically warm in these parts the last few days. Maher's kick will be down by Jamal Berry. Let's check in in the studio. Here's Robert Flores. Hey, Sean, Taco Bell Studio update. Michigan 5-0 for the second consecutive season. They lost in their last meeting with Northwestern back in 2008. And here, Adonis Smith gives Northwestern a 21-14 lead. They added a field goal, so now they lead by 10 at the half. Auburn and Arkansas tied at 14, less than five to play in that one in the first half. All right, Robert, thank you. Here we're tied at three. Solid opening drive for Ohio State, engineered by Braxton Miller. Just the third freshman ever to start at quarterback for Ohio State. Gave it to Jordan Hall. And a five-yard gain on first down. Arch Schleister, Terrell Pryor, the only other freshman to start under center as an Ohio State Buckeye. Well, I think, Sean, that you, you watch him, Braxton Miller, he has all the requisite skills. I mentioned it earlier, it's just going to be a matter of experience with him and seeing different looks week in and week out. But he can throw the ball well, he makes good decisions, he's got a chance. Coaches praise him for his poise and his humility, which are much appreciated. He's on target to Devin Smith. Alfonso Dennard swung him down immediately just short of the first down. Here's Janine. Well, guys, just as you were talking about, Braxton Miller just needs some experience. And when they took to the bench after that first series, it seemed like the entire offense was trying to help him out. He had running backs, wide receivers, tight ends all coming over, giving him little bits of advice. And actually, tight end Jake Stoneburner was called back into his own tight ends meeting because he, he would rather spend time uh, trying to give a little suggestion there to Braxton Miller. Third down and one. Four minutes to go, first quarter. Miller with plenty of room. And away from Austin Cassidy, Damian Stafford managed to trip him up. And Braxton Miller's been telling the coaches, you can put more on my shoulders, and it seems they're willing to do that with him tonight. Because he's putting more on his eyes. And so they're, they're drawing that thing up to go to the right. He just, he draws everybody with the first two steps. His eyes take him back to where no one is, and it's a big first down. Rain getting harder now. First and ten. Buckeyes from their own 41. Jordan Hall following the talented fullback Zach Boren out near the 45-yard line. Baker Steincooler made the tackle. The son of the former Husker great Dean Steincooler who won the Lombardi and Outland trophies. And he's living in the area in Syracuse, Nebraska, as yes, he, he told us yesterday. Well, you were happy when you heard that one. I huh? thought he met Syracuse, New York, there which is go. the hub of the universe, <laughs> along with Boston, Massachusetts. Oh, your universe. <laughs> yes. Dad's yeah, in the construction business just down the road. What a great player Dean was. 
Second and seven. Miller throws deep into coverage and almost intercepted by Austin Cassidy. It was intended for Reed Fragel, who's the backup tight end, better known as a blocker. It'll be third and seven. Sean, this is the same mistake we saw him make just a week ago against Michigan State. He just he doesn't set himself and just kind of floats the ball up there. And Cassidy wants that one back because that was a that was an interception going the other way. One thing we've seen in the, these two weeks we've seen Ohio State in person. Braxton Miller throws a lot of balls that do not resemble spirals. <laughs> yeah. A lot of end over end floaters. Not much breeze in the stadium here. It has picked up just a bit as the rain's gotten heavier. Timeout called by the Buckeyes with third and seven upcoming. 3-3 game late in the first quarter. Carl Pelini is the defensive coordinator in Nebraska. We talked to them yesterday, said we are not a big blitz team. But Matt, are you surprised they haven't come after this Ohio State offense more given the problems they have with blitzes against Michigan State? Sean, I'm shocked because in all of sport, and it's a copycat league, and when you see a team can't handle something, you go for it right away. I have not seen one blitz, either a run blitz or against the pass, up to this point. Third down and seven. And here they come. Yes, they do come after Miller, and he gets away. All the way to the 31 yard line. They'll mark it at the 32. When we spoke with Luke Fickle during the week, he said that he hoped if the other team does blitz, that Miller can make them pay by busting a run. And he did there. Well, they come with the blitz, and what they also come with is man coverage. And when you have man coverage, you see Levante David going right up to Hall. He's blitzing his coverage. Everybody's locked in, backs are turned. Miller sees that, takes advantage, big first down. 24-yard run, longest of his brief collegiate career for Braxton Miller. Huber Heights, Ohio, near Dayton. Jordan Hall is the tailback. Miller faked it to him. He swings it out for Stoneburner, who has running room down the far sideline. He will score! Patience, Sean, was the key to that throw. And it was on the freshman, Braxton Miller. Carl Polini livid. It's been a Nebraska defense. It's been nowhere near the standard set by the black shirts under the Polini brothers over the previous three seasons. Nebraska's giving up 27 points per game. I think they're going to review it to make sure Stoneburner got into the end zone. If it stands, it's a 32-yard touchdown, his fifth touchdown of the year on just 11 receptions. Yeah, he's, that's a touchdown. Yes. The ball is inside yeah, the pylon. That's a touchdown. And he's launching himself from the field of play. That's six. Austin Cassidy, the man who's trying to deny him. Stoneburner Jr. from Dublin, Ohio, right down the road from the Ohio State campus in Columbus. Two big first downs secured by the running of Braxton Miller on that drive with rushes of 12 and 24 yards. Sean all of a sudden Jim Bowman the offensive coordinator looks like he's blown the dust off that playbook when in reality what he's done is gotten himself a more mobile quarterback and a little more confident than a week ago. Maybe he wanted to be more creative last week and they just didn't have the ability to do it because they were under siege. They couldn't block anything. Certainly having Adams back helps. But I'm sure there are a lot of Buckeye fans watching this right now saying where were some of these plays last week. Yeah. And when you can't block it's tough to run into play. The ruling on the field of touchdown is confirmed. By the replay official Steve Newman. Great patience by the freshman. 
And more frustration from Carl Pellini. He took some of the blame for their subpar play when we visited with him yesterday. Drew Basel kicks the extra point. He said, I think maybe we've overcoached the defense and we've created robots. He said, guys are thinking too much about what they're supposed to be doing rather than just making plays. What a difference a week makes for the Ohio State offense. The Buckeyes lead 10-3. State leads Braxton Miller the 32 yard touchdown pass Jake Stoneburner their fine tight end 80 yard drive in seven plays Drew Basil will kick off will they kick it to Amir Abdullah the leading return man in the country yes they will started from the eight this time and better coverage by the Bucks. And there is a flag down in the middle of the field. Nate Oliver Third made the, the tackle. Legal block in the back. Number one, return team. Ten yards from the spot of the foul. First down. Let's take a look at tonight's Southwest Airlines playbook. Well, you heard me talk about patience. And this is an inherent thing. It's all about feel. And it's on the quarterback, Braxton Miller. This play, he's going to come back, and he needs to draw the, the defense to him. And it's just a matter of timing and feel, and right there it is. Just that little bit, it draws everybody over. Stoneburner gets it over and allows Brewster, the center, to be able to get out there, make a block on the edge, and then Stoneburner takes it in for six. Nebraska running just its fifth play from scrimmage. Rex Burkhead ahead for a yard. Meanwhile, the Ohio State offense has run 19 plays. So the plays from scrimmage 19 to 5 right now with a minute and a half to go in the first quarter. Nice job by Mike Brewster. We said at the top of the telecast that it was going to be on his shoulders for seeing everything. And you have to be able to identify and communicate. He's done a great job so far through this quarter. Nice it's job. It's been a lot easier for them because Nebraska hasn't brought anywhere near the pressure that Michigan State did when they came after the Buckeyes relentlessly last week. Burkhead out of bounds short of a first down. Here's Robert Flores. Hey Sean, last year Arkansas had a six point lead in the fourth quarter against Auburn before the Tigers closed the game on a 28 nothing run. They lead again this year. Tyler Wilson to Jarius Wright 21-14 Arkansas. All right Robert, thank you. Under a minute to go here first quarter. Martinez on third and four has his man Burkett out of the backfield first down out to the 35 dragged down by Etienne Sabino and Andrew Sweat a couple of linebackers They're playing for the most part with two linebackers and five DBs tonight well done by Martinez I think the lesson that he learned this week was don't try to push the ball down the field all the time he had a lot of plays in underneath coverage against Wisconsin last week that he looked past Tonight, he seems to be taking advantage of it. Late pitch. Off to Amir Abdullah, who's come in at running back. Good tackle by C.J. Barnett, the safety. After a gain to the 39, a gain of five. It'll be second and five. That's likely the last play of the first quarter. And that is the end of the first quarter. Ohio State had 178 yards of offense for the game last week against the Blitzing Spartans. They had 141 yards in the first quarter tonight, and they lead 10 to 3 in Lincoln. Welcome you back to ABC's Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines from Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska. 85,426 here tonight. After a quarter 10-3 Ohio State, here's Amir Abdullah out to the 50, taken down from behind by Storm Klein. Here's our Pacific Life game summary. What a first quarter it was for the Buckeyes after rushing for 
39 yards last week. They had 73 in the first quarter tonight. And 141 total yards. They dominated the first 15 minutes. Not only did they help their confidence offensively, but they helped their defense by keeping them off the field. Pistol, and that's the standard formation for Nebraska. Rex Burkhead took the handoff, got stacked up. We talk about this defense of Ohio State, Matt. And year in and year out, it has been among the best in the country. And right now, entering tonight's game, they're 13th in the nation in total defense and 11th in points allowed. And you think of what they've been put up against by the lack of performance of the offense. That's particularly impressive. And what's even more impressive, Sean, is they are young. They are young across the board. They got a lot of underclassmen playing. Tyler Reed, talented tight end, excellent receiver, was a wide receiver in high school, weighed about 200 pounds when he got here. He's beefed up to 230, and he's near a first down at the 42, about two yards short with a junior from Kansas City. You know, we at the start all week long, this quarterback, Martinez, has been taking a lot of heat, and I'm impressed with what he's done so far here tonight. Tim Beck, the offensive coordinator, called the right type of game for him. He's four for four passing. They give it to Burkhead for no gain on third down and one. Martinez gesturing that he wants to go for it. Adam Bellamy helped blow that play up. And Bo Pelini is going to go for it. I love Bo Pelini. Bo Pelini is what he's, he is exactly, you see what you get. And, and you get what you see. He's one of those guys, he's black and white. He believes his team is tough that you should go ahead and get this first down. You don't care, just go get it. Now you need your team to respond. Here's Martinez out, flanked. They line up in the Wildcat with Burkhead. He faked the handoff, and he got rocked at the line of scrimmage. Ohio State holds and will take over on downs. Good defensive front. They just whipped the Nebraska offensive line at the point. And why do you need to go to the Wildcat when you have one of the best runners in the country, a quarterback in Taylor Martinez? Well, that one I don't understand, but a nice job out there by Sweat42. He's going to come down, get a shot in the outside. Really well done by Roby25. The redshirt freshman corner held his ground, held it back inside. <laughs> So a huge play by the defense, and there is an injured Cornhusker, the left guard, Andrew Rodriguez, being helped off, sophomore. Bo Pelini raves about his tremendous athletic ability. Thinks he has a chance to have an NFL future. So they went for it on fourth down, hoping for a spark. We talked about all the angst in this area, the criticism directed this week at Bo Pelini and Taylor Martinez. And it was a very tense week here. Martinez now being evaluated for the way he responds to questions. False, False start. start. Offense number 76. Five yard penalty, still first down. J.B. Shugarts, the right tackle. It's gotten to the point now where the media is evaluating the way Taylor Martinez responds to questions. I, I, had, I enjoyed him yesterday. Mm -hmm. We had a great sit down with him. He was confident. He knew he has work to do. He knows what his shortcomings are. He's willing to work on them. I was, I was impressed with him. He seems to understand it comes with the territory when you're in a program like this with so much attention. Carlos Hyde off to the races. And they will not catch him. Touchdown, Ohio State, 63 yards. The whole key is get your defense going one way, and then you have to secure the edge on the backside, and that's what Reed Fragle, right there, number 88, does. They're going to start everything this way. Watch the defense run. Use their speed against them, but you have to be able to secure that corner and Friegel does just that. And then it's off to the races. And the longest run from scrimmage by an Ohio State player this season. And this crowd is stunned. 
Carlos Hyde takes it all the way for a touchdown. The last two snaps from scrimmage for the Buckeyes, a 32-yard touchdown pass and a 63-yard touchdown run. Ohio State's had three possessions. They've kicked the field goal and scored two touchdowns. They've already surpassed by 26 yards their yardage total for the entire game last week against Michigan State. We've been talking about what a long week it was here in Lincoln after the loss to Wisconsin. But obviously the Buckeyes had to deal with that loss at home. And then the news early in the week that they weren't going to get Devere Posey and Dan Heron back tonight. They're only going to have Posey for the last two games of the regular season. They would have had reason to perhaps be hanging their heads, but Luke Fickle said he liked the attitude in practice all week. They just needed to make plays, and they have. Basil's kickoff brought back by Abdullah. He got chopped down at the 22 by Jamie Wood. This week on ESPN's Monday Night Football, the Detroit Lions off to their first 4-0 start since 1980. Host their longtime division rival Chicago, the Bears and the Lions on Monday Night Football at ESPN, 8.30 Eastern Time, with coverage starting at 7, with Monday Night Countdown served by Applebee's. You can also watch the game streaming live on WatchESPN.com. And Donna Kinsu, the former Nebraska star, here tonight watching his old school. He'll be in the middle of that defensive line for the Lions on Monday night. Rex Burkhead. Carries out to the 25-yard line, a gain of two on first down for Nebraska. They need to take the Indominator and put him on offense right now because this offensive line has been getting whipped at the line of scrimmage. But Sue has brought an attitude change in Detroit along with his teammate from Nebraska, Kyle Vandenbosch. Burkhead after the short pass from Martinez danced out to the 28 and every yard hard earned for Nebraska right now. It'll be third down and five. For the Cornhuskers, 12 minutes to go first half. You know, we've talked about Taylor Martinez and not pushing the ball down the field, and that makes you eminently more defensible. And so if you're not at one point, Sean, they're going to have to push the ball down the field to stretch it, or you start defending a smaller and smaller field. Third and five, they gave him time. He throws short, and a good move after the catch by Burkhead yields the first down. Michael Bennett, the true freshman, made the tackle. At the 36, there's a kid in Rex Burkhead who's, no, who's played for a while, and at the next level, he'll be one of those guys who plays for a long time. He'll play special teams. He'll make cr critical third down conversions. He's a tough kid. He's a smart kid. He's a core player that you ha should have on your team. Mir Abdullah took his spot for a moment. Go to the far sideline, Kenny Bell. Gets two, and that's it. Again, quick reaction by the Ohio State defense from C.J. Barnett. Ball coming out quick again from Martinez. And Martinez mechanically is not great. He's best in the short and intermediate, like you said earlier, Sean. And that looks like what they are. They've tailored this game plan to here tonight. Seven for seven, but just 42 yards. Short throws, and the tackles are being made immediately. And now he's sacked by Jonathan Hankins. Big Hankins is another young one, just a sophomore. But Martinez wanted to push the ball down the field that time, but great coverage underneath by Andrew Sweat right there. And then Sabino also, and it forces him to pull it down. Not a great scrambler, Sean. More of a, just a pure straight line runner. Third down and nine. In that awkward throwing motion, he got it to Brandon Kenny, and with his work after the catch, he gets a first down. Tackled by Christian Bryant. That's a heck of a that's a that's a heck of a throw. Because this is an awkward throw, and as a quarterback, sometimes you have to make these type of throws. And boy, that was that was a great job by Kenny getting the first. And Travis Howard whiffed on the tackle that would have prevented the first down. Hankins, Sabino, and Sweat combined to take down Burkhead after a gain of a yard. Here's Robert Flores. Hey, Sean, update from that Michigan Northwestern game. Denard Robinson, short touchdown run to give the Wolverines now just a three-point deficit in the third quarter. Meantime, game one, ALCS. Rangers have scored twice. They lead 2-0 on Justin Verlander and the Tigers. 
And while we got the update, Rex Burkhead dropped for a loss. It'll be third down and 10. Good work by John Simon. And that defensive front. Sean, again, this goes back to staying out of third and longs. We've mentioned that Martinez has not pushed the ball past, really, 10 yards. And so this is one of those areas that's, that's tough for them. There's 10 yards rushing for Burkhead on 10 carries. Martinez blitzed and sacked. Michael Bennett again. Freshman out of Centerville, Ohio. True freshman who chose Ohio State because he wants to pursue a career in medicine, wants to be a doctor. He's a biology major. Well, they brought five. And they came with this twist stunts inside. It was not well protected at all. But Bennett comes up with a big sack. Again, keep in mind, Martinez, not a scrambler, Sean. If he, if he doesn't see, it's not like he creates anything. He'll pull it down, and he'll take off the run. Which seems odd, given that he is such a good runner, but as you said, he's more of a straight line runner. Great punt. With help on the bounce for Brett Maher. Stanley Jean-Baptiste downed it at the six-yard line. 17-3. Ohio State, middle of the second quarter. You know, Brutus enjoying the action so far. Ohio State's first trip ever to Lincoln, Nebraska. 17-3, but the crowd trying to make it difficult for the freshman Braxton Miller in this young offense, which begins with its worst field position of the night. Buckeyes from their own six. Jordan Hall straight ahead to the 10. Steinkohler and Evans the tackle. Here's Janine. Well, Sean, when the Husker defense was on the sideline, they weren't sitting on the bench. They were all standing around in a circle, screaming at one another. And Carl Polini was right in the middle. He's the defensive coordinator. He's like, guys, I don't know what to tell you anymore. This keeps happening over and over. Are your eyes in the right place? Do you think you're bringing pressure? Because you're not. And then Will Compton screamed, guys, we got to start playing or we are going to lose this game. Second and six. Hall gets away from Meredith to the line of scrimmage and is taken down by Will Compton, a yard short of the first down. Third and one upcoming. As we tick down to the midway point of the second quarter. Well, it's been a difficult season defensively for Nebraska. Last year, they were ninth in the country in scoring defense. And the year before that, they led the nation in scoring defense. But they're 73rd this year, as you saw. Hall looks like he was stopped short of the first down and it looks like that's where they're going to mark it as well Compton and Eric Martin that's stopped a huge Hall play. about six inches shy Sean that is a huge play for the defense the defense has been getting their rear end kick through this whole game this whole first half they needed to stop them right there which they did no surprise they're not going to measure this Referee signals fourth down, and Luke Fickle sends the punt team out. Ben Buchanan to punt. We're going to have a delay of game. And the play clock on the screen was incorrect, not in sync with the stadium play clock. Ben Buchanan's punt and a fair catch made by Amir Abdullah. At the 43. So a three and out created by the Nebraska defense. Can Martinez and the offense capitalize on good field position? Sean McDonough, Matt Millen, Janine Edwards back in Lincoln, Nebraska. Ohio State leading 17 to 3. Taylor Martinez, 8 for 8 passing tonight for Nebraska, but for just 53 yards. Yeah, and Sean, at one point, you're going to have to push the ball down the field because it starts to make it a lot easier to defend with the short field. There has to at least be the threat of something down the field. And they come out with three wide receivers to the left of Martinez out of the pistol. He gave it to Rex Burkhead, who is stuffed again. John Simon in the middle of that defensive front. Sweat also number 42. Simon and Sweat, are the te they're the two keys to this defense. You talked about them at the start of the show, but John Simon is just a relentless player, and Sweat is one of the better tacklers in the NCAA. Good reader, gets to the ball, 
Always around the football. Good instincts. No gain. Second and ten. The option from Martinez. Is stopped at the 49-yard line by C.J. Barnett. Quality gain of six. Third down and four. Upcoming for Nebraska. They're three out of six on third down tonight. Jeanette, we're just watching that play. I reflect back to that fourth and one when they split him out wide. And didn't it take advantage of his speed and his ability to be able to get to an edge? There's 42% for the year on third down. That's not a good number, middle of the pack in FBS football. He has been checking down most all his throws. Burkhead has been big in this situation. Just a four-man rush. They give him time. He throws short. Kenny Bell out of bounds at the 42 of the first down. They'll mark it at the 41-yard line on the completion of the redshirt freshman from Boulder, Colorado. Good for a 10-yard gain. Sean, there's a lot of ways to use your speed. Kenny Bell certainly has it. One is to go straight down the field and streak, and the other one is to run away from your coverage across the field, and Bell does just that. Bell's dad, Ken, played for the Denver Broncos. I remember Kenny. Marlowe came across the formation and took the ball. Tim stopped at the 39-yard line after a gain of two. Four and a half minutes to go, first half. Sean, the one thing that this Ohio State defense has done pretty well here tonight is their corners have forced things and have tackled pretty well. What you're trying to do is you're trying to get the corners who aren't necessarily the best tacklers make the tackle, but they've done it here tonight. Martinez down the field, one of the few times tonight, and it's caught. Tyree Cooper, the junior from Shreveport, Louisiana, with his first catch of the season. Watch the mechanics. They're not, they're not pretty, but it's effective here. Nice right on the money to Cooper and a big first down. And he, the problem with the mechanics there, Matt, the footwork. The footwork, and then he gets out of balance, Sean, with his shoulders. He doesn't drive that front shoulder. His left foot tends to come open. He gets a block and takes off running inside the 20-yard line to the 17. Rattled by Storm Klein. So after a 17-yard pass, Martinez follows with a five-yard run. Storms, looks like Storms hurt a little bit. Now, is that a great name for a football player? Storm. Or a Storm. weatherman. <laughs> no. Meteorologist Storm I'll Klein has the I, forecast. I will stay. Storm Klein sounds like a good linebacker, and he is one of them. Out of Newark, Ohio, 240-pounder, just a junior. First-year starter, backed up a terrific player, Brian Roll. In the middle of that linebacking core last year, second and five, Nebraska on the move. Down 17-3. to three. See everybody looking to the sideline. There's three signalers over there. They're all getting their direction from the sideline. I do not like that. Let the players play. Let the players make the decision. They move back into the pistol. Burkhead stayed in the block, and the pass from Martinez is his first incompletion of the night. Looking for Kenny Bell. It was a little bit behind him. But yeah, you can. Here's, here, here's all the signaling that's going on, and this is what's happened in the last probably decade. Uh, maybe a little longer than that in football. Every, it's, the game has gone more to the sidelines and in the coach's hand. Now, I understand it, but I do like having the players having the power to be able to make their adjustments and make the calls on the field. Third down and five. Big play here with under three minutes to go in the half. And Nebraska in the red zone, down by two touchdowns. Five receivers spread the formation. Martinez given time against the four-man rush, and it is incomplete. Ooh, Thrown into traffic for the true freshman Jamal Turner. Orion Johnson broke it up. That was a tiny window that he tried to get it into, Sean. And I, I got it—he was right there. He was right on this. Watch Orion Johnson, number set, number 19, down here. He's going to close on that ball really fast because it hung just a tad. 
34-yard field goal try now from Maher, who connected earlier from 50. It's good. Nebraska gets three. After its defense held for the first time tonight. 17-6 as we approach halftime. Ohio State on top. As a light rain continues to fall, good weather for the duck. Here in Lincoln, we take a look at the athletic trivia question. We want to know prior to Bo Pelini, who was the last former Ohio State team football captain to face the Buckeyes as a head coach. Bo Pelini, co-captain his senior year under John Cooper, was a safety in the late 80s under Earl Bruce and John Cooper, four-year letter winner. Academic all Big Ten. We know the answer, so we're not even going to speculate. <laughs> we inadvertently saw it at our meeting this morning. Bet Maher kicks off. Jordan Hall, the return for Ohio State. He's dangerous. And he got chopped down at the 29 yard line by Harvey Jackson. Well, Sean, the one thing that Ohio State fans were waiting to see is how this Ohio, Ohio State offense would respond. Specifically, how would Braxton Miller respond? And they've got to be extremely pleased because he's beaten them with good throws when he's had time. And he's also been able to use his eyes to take off and run when he's had that. Good patience in the pocket. He's played extremely well here tonight. Thrown it only six times. One of those, the 32-yard touchdown. Jake Stoneburner with a lot of run after the catch. First and 10. Carlos Hyde. And a 63-yard touchdown run for their other score. He got to the 34. Here's Robert. All right, Sean, give you a taste of what's going on on the ESPN networks. It is all about the SEC on ESPNU as Alabama has opened up a 27-0 lead on Vanderbilt going into the fourth. Arkansas continues to lead Auburn on ESPN and also on your computer on ESPN3. ESPN2, Georgia leading Tennessee late in the third. Mark Rick looking for his 100th win there. Give Rick to the Bulldogs credit. They've rallied after an 0-2 start. Second and five, under two minutes to go. First half. Hyde again. You'd expect them to be conservative, would you not, with still the young and inexperienced offense? And yeah. they'd be happy to have an 11-point lead at the half. Yeah, absolutely. And that, but I think right here, Sean, this is a big third down again for Nebraska with an ability with three timeouts left to be able to get the ball back and maybe have the opportunity to put more points on the board. So it's on this Husker defense to get the stop here. I would imagine if Carl Pelini's defense can hold here for the second Ohio State possession in a row, they would use a timeout. Miller's letting the play clock run down like a veteran. Drop the snap and falls on it. No timeout yet from Nebraska, and now they get it. Using their first. 103 left in the half. That was going to be a lead with the quarterback. The answer. Affleck. To tonight's Affleck trivia question. Prior to Bo Pelini, the last Ohio State captain to face the Buckeyes as a head coach. And the answer is Gary Moeller, who was the captain of the Ohio State Buckeyes in 1962. And later faced his alma mater as the head coach at their arch rival Michigan. And had a great run as the Michigan head coach. When Bo Pelini wasn't particularly nostalgic, he has great affection for Ohio State, said he had a great experience there. He's coached against them before a couple of times as an assistant at Iowa and at LSU. And LSU was a national championship game. College teammates, so Coach Peterson over there. Well, here's a punt from Ben Buchanan. They come after him. And he got it off. And a good kick. Abdullah. After the momentary difficulty, didn't get very far. Brought it back just to the 16-yard line. We'll see how the 
Cornhuskers play it with poor field position. Coming up at the half, Scott Van Pelt, Jesse Palmer, and the Northwestern Mutual Halftime Report. All the scores and highlights from today's college football action, including Oklahoma's annihilation of Texas in the Red River rivalry. Good talent, Trump scheme every time. Even though Nebraska leans heavily on the run, they are a big play offense. They can get big chunks from the running game, including from Martinez. Tackled well in the open field by Travis Howard. They'll come quickly back to the line. Line of scrimmage, the 22, second and four. Got to be quick. If they're intending to score, this isn't quick enough. No, too much time. We can understand with this poor field position. Now he launches one deep at a man, open and overthrew him. Over the head of Tyler Reed and picked off by Orion Johnson. And Rex Burkhead tackles him at the Nebraska 47. So 15 seconds left for Ohio State. Sean, this is exactly what you were talking about earlier. Watch the mechanics. Taylor Martinez when he wants to go down the field. Look at his feet. His feet are completely wrong. He steps left to throw straight, and then he's out of balance, does not drive that front shoulder. He opens up his hips and his shoulders. Consequently, the ball lollipops down the field. There's not enough zip on it, and he's got to get that thing straightened out, but Orion Johnson's happy that he hasn't. First interception of the year for Johnson, who was a starter at the beginning of the year, now plays in extra defensive back situations. Will they be aggressive here with good field position? Braxton Miller. He's in at the very least field goal range now. Eric Martin trying to run him down. They tackle him at the 18 with four seconds to go. Boo Bird's out in force now here in Lincoln. It looked like after that interception when Martinez was being booed, we had the shot of Bo Pelini kind of waving in disgust at the fans. Well, I got to tell you, Braxton Miller just broke off somebody's ankles down there on a move that was unbelievable. I didn't get to see it. It's, it's Will Compton. <laughs> Will, Will got to pick his jock strap up. It's laying out there on the 35-yard line. So the 29-yard run gets them into field goal range. That's impressive. And the coaches say he's a talented guy, and you're starting to see some of those talents on display from Braxton Miller. Charge timeout, Nebraska. <laughs> well, Bo Pelini said he was embarrassed after the 31-point loss last week at Wisconsin. He apologized to the fans. Then during the week, he mentioned he thinks these fans have been a little harsh, particularly on Taylor Martinez. And the fans aren't happy with what they've seen in this first half. Hasn't been a good performance on either side of the ball from Nebraska. What if every storybook character you ever knew or thought you knew was real? From the writers of Lost, it's a series unlike anything you've ever seen on television, and the ultimate battle between good and evil. ABC's Once Upon a Time premiering Sunday, October 23rd at 8, 7 Central on ABC. Well, Sean, once upon a time, this Nebraska defense had two straight three and outs to be able to help their offense. And then they came back with a giving up that big play by Braxton Miller. So here's Drew Basil. 35-yard field goal attempt from the right hash mark. Derek Irwin, the holder. George McCreatus, the snapper. The operation is solid, and the kick is good. As the half ends, Ohio State had 178 yards of total offense for the game last week. They rushed for exactly 178 in the first half and had 246 total. And a 20 to 6 lead to the delight of the folks who've made the trip from Ohio. Here's Janine Edwards. Bo, not the way you want to go into halftime off a turnover like this. What's the message you want your team to receive from you in the locker room? <laughs> we got to figure. I mean, we got to execute. We're missed, missing tackles. We're, uh, you know, we're not we're not playing our type of football. We, you know, we're uh, 
it's, it's we need to fix us really quick. We got to come out. We got to we got a lot of we got plenty of time to, to take care of our business. We just got to play better football. It seems Ohio State has shored up their quarterback protection since since last week. How can you create a little bit They're more just pressure? Running the football. We're, we haven't been tackling. I mean, they, he hasn't. There's nothing about protection. They're running draw, and we're we're not making the tackle. Thanks, Bo. And welcome back, everyone, to ABC Saturday Night Football, presented by Southwest Airlines. Braxton Miller and the Ohio State Buckeyes leading Taylor Martinez and the Nebraska Cornhuskers or Huskers at the half. They're having trouble, and so am I. 20 to 6 is the score at halftime. Welcome back to Lincoln, Sean McDonough and Matt Millen. Unbelievable the difference from last week to this week for Ohio State. Yeah, a tale of two different teams. And uh, keep in mind, a week ago, the Ohio State team was just mauled. Nine sacks, had 178 yards of total offense. Tonight they have 178 yards rushing in the first half. No sacks. They're handling everything. Braxton Miller has been the difference in this first half. Good decisions, both in the passing and in the running game. And so that is huge for Ohio State. For Nebraska, they've got to be able to get pressure here in the second half, Sean. And they've got to be able to generate more than a 10-yard pass in their passing game. That Ohio State offense under siege by the blitzing Michigan State defense all of last week's game. They haven't faced anywhere near the same kind of pressure from the Nebraska defense here tonight. Drew Basil kicks off for the Buckeyes. Down to Amir Abdullah at the goal line. There's a flag down. Might have been an illegal block on the return. Looked like Harvey Jackson came flying by and might have been guilty of a block in the back. Illegal block in the back. Number one return team. Half the distance from the spot of the foul. First down. There was Jackson. That'll take him back inside the 10-yard line as we look at the Pacific Life game summary. Braxton Miller is a dual threat, and he was able to put those skills on display in the first half. Well, and his patience, Sean, his patience in the pocket and his ability to run and make a big play, that's what was, that was the difference in that half. On first down from the five-yard line, Rex Burkhead bottled up at the seven, a gain of two, and he hasn't found any running room. Burkhead now 12 carries for 13 yards. The other thing that we've seen is this Ohio State defensive line is whipping the, the offensive line of the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Toss it to Burkhead. Trying to turn the corner. Got a block from the tight end, Ben Cotton. Chased out of bounds by Andrew Sweat. Short of the first down. Ball be marked at the 14-yard line, just beyond the 13. They need to get just beyond the 15. So about a yard and a half to go on third down for Bo Pelini in the offense. Take the toss, and then Martinez slipped as he threw and threw incomplete to Ben Cotton. They've had intermittent rain, most of it light, and the field might be just a little bit slippery to cause that. Well, they've also had intermittent offense, and maybe it was the field, maybe not, but Sean, that was a, that to, to me right there, that was a big uh, third down. They needed to convert that. They needed to come out here in the second half and establish something, and in fact, they established nothing. And Ohio State should have excellent field position after the punt by Brett Maher. Go on, go on, go on, go on. Off the side of his foot. Thank you very much. And doesn't get any kind of bounce either. About five yards on the bounce and roll. And plus field position for their first possession of the second half for Ohio State after a 34-yard punt. They'll begin at the Nebraska 47. So did Carl Pelini and Brother Bo come up with some answers defensively? Bo Pelini's been saying all week, it's about us. We need to fix us. And that's what he said to Janine Edwards. On his way off the field at halftime, Jordan Hall. Tackled by Siante Evans, the cornerback, who was up close to the line of scrimmage. Gain of four. Sean, we talked about the defensive line of the Ohio State Buckeyes. 
As you look at Terrence Moore, number 90, is down with an injury, uh, controlling that offensive line. This offensive line of Ohio State is whipping the defensive front of Nebraska as well. So to me, this game right now is being controlled by the, uh, by the offensive and defensive lines of the Buckeyes. And some substitutes in there, including Terrence Moore, who was injured on the play. Jared Crick has not been much of a factor. One of the highlighted matchups coming into this game was Crick and Steincooler in the interior of that defensive line, particularly against the outstanding center, Michael Brewster. Moore being helped off. He's a senior from New Orleans. Looks to be a little more comfortable as he goes. Here's Janine Edwards. And Sean, we'll get a check on him and find out what the update is. But in the meantime, I had a chance to sp speak to Luke Fickle coming back after half. And he is so pleased with the play of his quarterback, Braxton Miller. He said it, he's showing signs of confidence tonight for the first time. And he said the offensive line is doing a tremendous job. They've run the ball for 178 yards in the first half. That's the total offensive yards they had in the entire game last week. Line up in a power eye formation and another slip. This time Jordan Hall. And it cost him a loss of a couple back to the 45-yard line. It'll bring up third down and seven. Here's Janine talking about head coach Luke Fickle talking about that offensive line and how proud he is. Now, defensively, now what you've got to do, you've got to make it personal. You've got to turn this into a fight inside. You cannot accept anything except a win if you're playing one of those down four positions. Again, the eye. Miller fake to nobody in particular. Way too much time. Throws a wobbler, but it is caught. It'll be ruled a catch for Chris Fields inside the 10 yard line. Defenders still maintaining it wasn't a catch, but they are going to mark it at the eight. Sean, he can get back here and read Tolstoy. He had so much time, it was ridiculous. That is a deep in, and that is takes a long time to develop. It's the climb. Result of the play is a first down. No, was it a catch? They showed the replay on the scoreboard here. The fans thought he lost it. Oh, they're right. That hit the ground in between. That should be an incompletion. He has it. He hits. And then he loses it right there. Right there. Yeah, he lost, he lost control of that. Should not be a catch. Great effort, but no catch. The ruling on the field, a completed pass of 37 yards to Chris Fields, sophomore from Painesville, Ohio. It'll be his longest reception of the season, if it stands. And this is a very big replay review. There was a penalty against Nebraska that was declined, so they could go back and revisit that if the call on the completion is overturned. Bo Pelini, he didn't read his lips, he dropped the ball instead of the official on the far sideline. Defensive holding was the call, so if the play is overturned, they'll go back and accept the penalty. And again, no pressure. I mean, I that's, don't know how you could watch shot. the film of the game last week between Michigan State and Ohio State when Ohio State couldn't block anybody against relentless pressure and then come out here and provide so little pressure from your defense if you're in Nebraska tonight. And if you're sitting at home and you're thinking, well, you know, you don't want to be stuck in man, you don't have to play man behind it. You can play zone, you can play zone blitzes, you can play anything behind, but you need to bring some numbers. And they struggled mightily with... The pass was incomplete. That's the right call. However, during the play, holding on the 17 defense, 10 yards from the previous spot, automatic first down. Deontay Evans, the sophomore corner, Took over as a starter this year for the first round NFL draft choice of the New York Giants, Prince Amukamara. So it's a big penalty. The ball goes to the 35 yard line and it's first and 10 Ohio State. On the edge of field goal range now at the very least for Drew Basil. They're hoping for more. They 
bring Evans off the corner. And he's in on the tackle, helping Will Compton, stopping Hall for a two-yard gain. And Bo Pelini and Carl Pelini have well-deserved reputations for oh, yeah. being defensive gurus. I mean, everywhere Bo Pelini went as an assistant coach, including one year he was here as a defensive coordinator, the defenses were outstanding. His defenses have been terrific here the last three years, but not this year. When he took over in 2008, they inherited a defense that was giving up 38 points per game in the last year under Bill Callahan, 116th in the nation in scoring defense. Fixed that problem immediately. Miller throws after the fake, and Fields was open, but it was just a little bit too high. Boy, that sophomore, Chris Fields, got on top of the coverage fast. And he had time. This is just an errant throw by Braxton Miller. Watch Deontay Evans, number 17. Well, he's lucky he didn't get with another hold right there. Mm. He, he got on top of him, just that little bit of move on pop. I think Deontay Evans is an example of one of those players, and Carl Pelini didn't mention him by name, of a guy who's been coached so much now that he just seems unsure of himself more than anything else. And that happens. That happens a lot. And you heard Luke Fickle, when they talked about Luke Fickle, about how much confidence they're playing with. Conversely, that's playing with no confidence. They bring pressure here, and it's another wobbler with a flag down. It's caught. Corey Brown inside the 10. Flag thrown in the secondary. That's Andrew Green, number 11. Corey Brown, they have two Corey Browns on the team. He's known as Holding. Philly. Defense number 11. That penalty's declined. Result of the plays of first down. It was Andrew Green guilty of the hold? They turn it down, 27-yard completion. To Corey Brown from the Philadelphia area, Upper Darby, Pennsylvania. John, you could just watch. Yeah, you could see the the uh, hold at the top. But you could just see Braxton Miller gaining confidence as this game is going on. He saw he had one one on one outside. He went right to it. Jordan Hall inside the five and down at the one yard line. Tackled by Austin Cassidy. And Ohio State is one yard away from a three touchdown lead here in the third quarter. This is just a butt whipping by the Ohio State offensive line. They are just driving people off the ball. Hat on a hat, everything's moving forward. Now they bring, uh, bring the big bruiser Carlos Hyde in at tailback at 238 pounds. He gets the call, puts his head down, drives the legs. No signal yet. Looked like he crossed the goal line, and he did. Touchdown, Buckeyes. For all you high school kids at home, I want you to watch his, watch his legs in the drive. Watch how he never stops driving. It's like hitting those sleds and practice every day. Just drive, drive until you complete it, and he did it. His second touchdown of the game, Drew Basil for the extra point. Stunned silence here at Memorial Stadium. 27-6 Ohio State early in the third quarter. Sean, this will be a critical position, possession for Nebraska. They have to score six here. Drew Basil kicks off. Amir Abdullah from the one. And he's taken down to the 30-yard line. Kenny Guyton made the tackle. For the Ohio State Buckeyes, this is the position they wanted to get this Nebraska offense in. You wanted to have be in a position where you want Taylor Martinez to have to throw the ball consistently. That is not his strength. Do they have to do that now, though? I mean, there's still 10.46 to go in the third quarter. No, no, they can still be balanced, but this is the position that they want them in. Inevitably, he's going to have to throw. Runs the option and keeps it. Haven't seen a ton of option tonight from Nebraska. Martinez started out 10 for 10 passing with... A steady dose of short passes. He's missed on his last four, including an interception. 10 out of 14 for 80 yards. For the larger problem right now for Nebraska, they haven't run the football. 
45 yards rushing. And 200 yards rushing has been the magic number under Bo Pelini. They are 0-5 the last two seasons when Nebraska's been held under 200 yards rushing. 14-0 at 200 plus. Martinez throws incomplete. Flag down on the play at the line of scrimmage. Kenny Bell, the intended receiver with Christian Bryan in coverage. Against Nebraska for illegal procedure. Decline it. Illegal formation. Offense. Five men lined up in the backfield. A penalty's declined. Third down. Third and five. Again, this is the position. Look, teams are going to play Nebraska this way. They're going to load the box and take the run game away and force Mar uh, Taylor Martinez's arm to have to win the game for him. And teams are just going to bet that it's just it's not a good enough arm. There have been some of you suggesting he should be replaced as quarterback. They don't have a lot of options behind him. Martinez takes off running, and he paid the price. He got buried at the 38-yard line. That. Andrew Sweat there, Jonathan Hankins nearby, and they will punt on fourth down and two. Christian Bryant just came out of the secondary. Etienne Sabino there as well. He did a great job of closing on that. That was great team defensive speed getting to the football. Maher punts. Better effort this time. Fair catch signal made by Jordan Hall. And a timeout on the field. 9.15 to go. Third quarter. Ohio State with the ball on a 21-point lead after a 50-yard punt. Homecoming weekend here in Lincoln. A lot of the great former Nebraska stars of the past are here, including Will Shields, who's heading into the College Football Hall of Fame at the induction ceremony in New York City in December. Great guard, one of 17 Huskers who've had their jersey number retired. Alden Trophy winner here, All-American. Played with distinction 14 years in the NFL. Kansas City Chiefs started 231 games in a row. 12 Pro Bowls, you have to think he'll be heading for the Pro Football Hall of Fame as well. First and 10, Ohio State. Carlos Hyde broke the tackle of Sean Fisher at the line of scrimmage, who's agitated with himself, and it winds up being a three-yard gain for Hyde. These Ohio State Buckeyes are just going back to just good old-fashioned football, and just letting that offensive line kind of control the tempo of the game right now. By far their best performance in the six games this season under Luke Fickle. Ohio State came in at three and two. They were 11 point underdogs tonight, according to the local paper. They hadn't been a double figure underdog in a Big Ten game since 1999. And this is a big surprise to many. High driven back by several tacklers, including Will Compton. Jared Crick in on the play as well. 17-yard line is where they'll spot it. And a third down and five to come. And Compton not getting up. Uh, he, he's right in the middle of that thing. From Von Terre, Missouri, told us a couple of weeks ago when we were here, a small town of about 3,800, 60 miles from St. Louis. Wants to be a coach someday. His brother Cody's a wrestler here at Nebraska. And as they tend to Compton, we referenced a moment ago the Pro Football Hall of Fame, and I know both of us want to extend our deepest sympathies to the family of Al Davis, who passed away at his home in Oakland at the age of 82, legendary leader of the Oakland Raiders, one of the great figures in the history of professional football. Sean, we just lost one of the great, really, icons of the game. He excelled at every level of football. As a coach, he was a commissioner, he was, he was everything. General manager, owner, you name it, he did it. He will be greatly missed. Well, a great friend to you. You were playing days back there with the Raiders. 
Compton off the field now. Third down and five. Miller after the fake. Great move behind the line of scrimmage. And he has the first down. The ball's out. And it looks like Ohio State. No, they say David got the football. Must have wrestled it away because you could see a couple of his teammates seemed agitated. They didn't recover the fumble. But all of a sudden, David emerged. And a huge turnover by the Buckeyes at their own 23, their first of the night. Watch Braxton Miller make a miss. Miss tackle right there. And then Levante David just, just stole it, it right away. out of him. Right out of his hands. And that's a legitimate play. He's not down. He just pulls it out. It's a great play by Levante David. So they take it back at the 23. Burkhead straight ahead. Quality gain. Got six on first down. So the offense sputtering all night long. The defense trying to provide a spark. The last three possessions for Nebraska on offense have been an interception and two three and outs. Well, they have to get six points here. They cannot settle for a field goal. They have to get six. Exactly midway through the third quarter. Martinez, after a great fake, goes untouched into the end zone. First touchdown of the night for Nebraska. 18-yard run by Taylor Martinez. That whole thing is set up by a great, great play by Levante David. Ripped the ball away from Braxton Miller. And this score would put a little game pressure, you would think, on the Ohio State offense. Next time they're on the field, the extra point good by Brett Maher. It's the ninth rushing touchdown of the season for Taylor Martinez. And the Cornhuskers are back in it, down by two touchdowns midway through the third. Levante David, the takeaway. And just two plays later, Taylor Martinez, an 18 yard touchdown run. Nebraska back within 14. Maher's kickoff short to Jordan Hall. And he's stuck at the 22 yard line. Jim Ebke leading the kickoff coverage. Let's go back to the Nebraska touchdown. Sean, this is all about numbers. Here's what you do you come to the line of scrimmage, you split that thing in half, and you look one, two, three. But now you have four, five, and six because you don't account for the runner against four defenders. So you come down and you split that thing in half, and now you have two guys out in front. They chase. Nice seal by Rodriguez. Yoshi Hardrick inside, and here's the lane. Very well done. It's all about numbers, and it was perfection right there for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Including the outstanding fake by Martinez of a handoff to Aaron Green. Crowd back in. Oh, there's Jordan Hall. He got banged down after a gain of three. Out to the 26-yard line. It'll be second and seven. Jared Crick in on the tackle for the black shirt defense. Which we've not really heard his name here tonight. And Sean, I, I believe what you said earlier is right with Jared Crick. We had him against Washington. He got hurt. He's not been the same player since then. And they need, they need a big-time effort out of Crick to anchor that defensive front. Braxton Miller, true freshman quarterback, has had a terrific effort tonight. And just a four-man rush, and they get nowhere near him, and he takes off again. Lamonte David tripped him up, but the stumble forward gets a first down for Ohio State. This just guy, this Braxton Miller, he is playing, again, we talked about confidence. But he has done a great job here tonight of pulling it down and using his feet. Again, you don't ever account for the quarterback as a runner, and he's been the difference in this game for Ohio State. What a difference for him after the relentless pressures of last week in Michigan State. He's had all kinds of time tonight right, against this Nebraska start. defense. Offense number 74. Five-yard penalty, still first down. You wonder if the snap was late because Jack Newhort wasn't the only the offensive player moving ahead of the snap. They mentioned his number, but there were others moving as well. <laughs> Brad
Braxton Miller nine rushes for 93 yards tonight. He's thrown for 95. All the tailback. It's away from Compton. David and Cassidy combine on the stop. It looked like they were going to stuff it for no gain. Instead, he reached the 37-yard line. The line to make the 43. Six more for a first down for Ohio State. Well, you heard Bo Pliny talking to Janine at halftime saying they're missing a lot of tackles. They've got to make them. There's another example. But credit Jordan Hall for finishing that run. Will Compton, who was shaken up earlier, back on the field for Nebraska. Second and six. Again, the eye. Play action fake. Might have been a design run for Miller, and they're there for him this time. Sean Fisher, the linebacker, junior from Omaha, dropped the play for a loss back to the 35. That's a heck of a play by Sean Fisher. We have a, a Buckeye down. But Sean Fisher gets cut right there at the line of scrimmage by Justin Bourne, 44, and he gets right back up. And Braxton Miller is down, and that is a huge blow. And he's in considerable pain. Joe Boserman is now the backup quarterback. He was the starter at the beginning of the season for Ohio State, but struggled against Miami in particular in their third game of the season at Miami. And in the next game against Colorado, Miller became the starter. He's starting for the third straight game tonight. And really came in last night in relief of Braxton Miller when he struggled and did not do well until the end of the game, Sean, when Michigan State went into a prevent defense and then he was able to make a big throw and they got their seven points. But the way Braxton Miller was playing here tonight, I mean, it was night and day from a, from a week ago. And boy, I hope, I hope that's not what I think it is. That does not look good. Right leg injury. Well, Janine Edwards said Luke Fickle talked about the difference in the confidence level tonight. And certainly they've had much more time to execute. So Boserman is in as they take Miller to the bench. I would pressure Boserman right off the start. Third down and eight. Really no time to warm up. Hit as he throws, and incomplete again. He had time, but couldn't find anybody open. He threw it over the head of the tight end, Jake Stoneburner. So and they'll punt with four and a half to go in the third quarter. Did get a little pressure on the outside from Meredith, 34, were able to get a hit on him at the end, but Bowserman struggles when there was pressure in his face, John. We saw it last week. He, he almost looked like he panicked at times. There's Ben Buchanan to punt to the dangerous Amir Abdullah. They're setting up for return. It's a good punt by Buchanan, a junior from Westerville, Ohio, and Abdullah is taken down immediately. Well covered by Zach Domicone, the special team standout for the Buckeyes. Time now for tonight's Big Ten update, brought to you by Dr. Pepper, of course, with the expansion to 12 teams with the addition of Nebraska for the first year. They're divided into two divisions, the Legends and the Leaders. Michigan with the win at Northwestern now setting the pace in the Legends, which seems to be wide open. And you'd have to think Wisconsin's the big favorite on the other side, although Illinois is proving that its success is not a fluke. The ball dropped by Jamal Turner, and then picked it up and tried to come back the other way, and it's a big loss. Back to the 14-yard line, loss of six. Jared Goble, John Simon, Andrew Sweat all there after Turner lost the grip. Hey, so you see Braxton Miller go off, and you kind of get a little bit deflated, but I got to tell you, this Nebraska offense has done very little against the Ohio State defense. This defensive front has been playing well all night long. And they have under 200 yards of offense. Martinez takes off. And slides down, and then the ball bounces out, but he was down just across the 20. C.J. Barnett nearest. 
And the clock runs down to three and a half minutes left in the third quarter. This is where Ohio State wants to keep this Nebraska offense. Third and long. And force Martinez to have to use his arm to beat him. Miller was on his feet and trying to walk it off. So perhaps that's good news on the Ohio State sideline. Third down and nine. They're four out of ten on third down tonight. No rush. First down. Kyler Reed. Taken down by Orion Johnson. But it's a gain to the 33. And a first down Nebraska. Nicely done by Taylor Martinez. This time, look, you see the feet? The feet were better. Step and throw. He drove the shoulder a little bit better. And it was an accurate throw. All kinds of time again. And on target to Kenny Bell. Across midfield. And he skips out of bounds at the 47-yard line of Ohio State. 20-yard game. And a nice crossing route, which needed a well-thrown ball. Martinez delivers again. He can, he's pretty accurate in that 10 to 15-yard range. Pass there, he struggles. Interesting formation there. Three backs around a Martinez. The handoff went to Aaron Green, true freshman. He's out of bounds inside the 41-yard line. It'll be second down and three. Sean, you can feel, you can see the sense of urgency by this Nebraska offense, and you can also feel it in the crowd, and they're feeding off each other right now. Well, Levante David with the takeaway that has turned momentum in this game, at least for the moment. Martinez. Burkhead was pushed back into him, so he decided to take it down and run, and he has a first down. Out of bounds at the 36-yard line. Big Jonathan Hankins came in and took Burkhead and just threw him backwards. And of course, Taylor Martinez used those feet again and got himself with that speed out of trouble. Hankins has played himself a pretty good game here tonight. He's a big fella, 335 pounds. Jonathan Hankins, number 52. Just once he was about 365 one time. And the three backs in the triangle around Martinez. Another good fake and a deep throw. Touchdown. Quincy Anunwa. Two elements to that score, Sean. The first one is a great play fake. And the second one is a tremendous throw by Taylor Martinez right on the money. And yes, it's over 20 yards. 36 yards. First catch of the night for Anunwa. Sophomore from Moreno Valley, California. The extra point from Maher to make it a seven-point game. And again, the interesting formation with those backs surrounding Taylor Martinez and another very good fake. That's 30 personnel, three backs. And here's, here's the key right there. See Christian Bryant? His eyes are in the backfield. He's looking at the run coming this way. And when that happens, here comes the receiver and gets right by him. Nicely done on the top of that receiver and the stem. And what a great throw. Right on, right where it has to be. That is really well done. And Nunwa does a great job at the top of his route. Good After throw. Short throws all night long. The element of surprise helps as well. Martinez on target. And Anunwa has also made an impact on this program as a physical blocker with the score. 80 yards in seven plays. It took just two minutes and 37 seconds. Completions for Martinez on that drive of 12, 20, and then 36 for the touchdown. They're taping up the right ankle of Braxton Miller, so perhaps he's going to return to the game. Maher the kickoff. Jordan Hall started it before. Brought it back to the 31-yard line. Here's Janine Edwards. And yes, Sean, you're right. They are taping up the right ankle of Braxton Miller. When he came off the field earlier, he had tears running down his face. He was in a lot of pain, but the trainers have been evaluating him. 
He just has gotten his shoe back on. They taped up his ankle heavily. They gave him some medication to take, aspirin, anti-inflammatory, what have you. Uh, he is now gingerly walking. His uh, shoe is back on, and they've taped over the shoe. But right now, he's just testing this ankle out. And grimacing a bit as he does it. Doesn't look comfortable right now, so it's still Joe Bosman who hands it off to Carlos Hyde. Only two there for high. Let's go back and take a look at the injury to Braxton Miller. Well, there's a, there it is right there. And when he's making that cut on the turf, his shoe grabs, and you can see right there, he, he felt it right away. So right ankle injury. Looks like a lateral, lateral deal on the outside part. And walking better now, perhaps too, as he adjusts to the tight tape job. So it's Bosserman, fifth year senior, 25 years old, spent three years playing minor league baseball, a pitcher in the Pirates organization. He throws incomplete and almost intercepted in the direction of Corey Brown. And momentum has swung in this game. And your guy, Jean Baptiste, almost had himself a play right there. He was a wide receiver until three weeks ago. Carl Pellini said, I've been begging for him on defense since spring practice. He was a DBN wide receiver in high school in Miami. Just a sophomore, Carl Pellini thinks he has a chance to be a great one. Real long arms, and he uses them well. He's 6'3 as a cornerback. Looks like they're going to bring a little pressure, and they do. And it's they do. Late. And they don't get there, and Bozerman throws for a first down, and then a flag thrown at the end of the play. John Baptiste in on the tackle and Corey Brown. You wonder if he led with the helmet as the flag was thrown as the contact was made. He After was the down. the play was over. Yep, Unnecessary hit. roughness. Number 16 defense. 15 yards from the end of the run. On, Automatic man. first down. Uh, here, here's the big deal on this play, okay? They're going to bring pressure and they mess it up. They mess it up because they show it first and then they get out of it and then they come from too far away. You can't get there from five five yards past the line of scrimmage. You have to time that so at the snap of the ball, you're getting there. That didn't work. 13-yard gain, 15-yard penalty, and now Hyde has him in the field goal range, and that's huge. It would make it a two-score game, and they have an excellent kicker. And the difference between the blitzing we saw of Michigan State last week against Ohio State, when they were blitzing, they were coming like their hair was on fire. Yes. These Nebraska players are very tentative as they come rushing when they do rush. They're, it's it's not in sync, Sean. Last week we saw a Michigan State team that was bringing pressure, and they were hitting it at the snap. They were anticipating well. We haven't seen that here tonight. And that's going to be the end of the third quarter. Nebraska led, or rather Ohio State led by 14 of the half. They built it to 21, but two scores by Nebraska has them back in the game as we head to the fourth. After finishing first and second last weekend at Dover, Kurt Busch and Jimmy Johnson have reemerged as championship contenders. Now they set their sights on the points leader Kevin Harvick and Carl Edwards to chase heads to the heartland. The chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup continues tomorrow at Kansas, 1 o'clock Eastern. The NASCAR countdown to get you started presented by Napa. The race telecast brought to you by Chrysler. Second and three, Ohio State as we go to the fourth quarter. Carlos Hyde spins forward close to a first down. Got hit near the line of scrimmage, but spun ahead. And it looks like he has the first down. They're going to measure it. That was all on Carlos Hyde, all 240 pounds of him because Levante David had him in the backfield and he took the blow and spun off of it. Great effort, finished the run. Looks like he got the first. Carlos from Naples, Florida. He went to Fork Union Military Academy in Virginia. It is a first down. He's a big man. He's a big man, he's young. Just a sophomore, I believe. And you are correct, sir. Yeah, 240 pounds. He's got good speed, too, Sean. He's rushed for 90. Braxton Miller has rushed for 91. At 35 yards rushing last week. They have 229 tonight on the ground. 
Bosman hands it off to Hyde. Levante David runs him out of bounds behind the line of scrimmage. What a night he's had. I remember we talked about him with his great instinct and his and just a just overall great playing speed. And here you just see it. He just runs him right down. Inside out. Not a real big kid. I mean he's about 225 to 30 pounds. But he can flat out run. At the next level, he'll be a will linebacker. You got to be able to hide him a little bit so you don't get the big guys on him. But boy, he's a playmaker. Started playing football at age six in Miami. Bo Pelini said he has tremendous love for the game. Great student of the game and great instincts, as we mentioned earlier. Bosserman, after a couple of fakes, locks it into the end zone. Incomplete. Well covered by Damian Stafford. Intended for Corey Brown. Stafford does a nice job at the end of this thing. There's the pump again. There's time for him to be able to throw. Trout wants an offensive. Yeah, could have been. Pass interference call as they see the uh, replay. Ah, no, that's okay. They let him play. It's football. Yep. This is right on the edge of field goal range now. It'd be 49 yards from here. Basil's long is 47. Here's the matchup down below. It's man to man. They're also going into the win. Four man rush. Bosserman throws incomplete. Tender for Devin Smith. Alfonso Dennard in coverage. And now what will Luke Fickle do? Basil's career long is 47. This would be 49 into the win. And Eric Martin got a little bit of pressure that time. Good coverage outside by Dennard, who they finally got back a week ago, their best cover guy. Looks like they're going to go for it. Basil was standing there. With Luke Fickle. Well, I, here comes. I would try it here, Sean. Team. Ooh, interesting. I would try the field goal here and trust my defense. I think Basil has the leg. He hasn't kicked one longer than 47, but he has the leg to do it. The well, last year, he tried just a couple of long field goals and them both blocked 50 plus. The flag. Delay a game. I would decline it. Yeah, because now it gives the punter a little more room with which to work. Braxton Miller, after going to the dressing room, is back on the field. Ankle injury moments ago in the, the third quarter. What the heck are quarter. they doing? They don't have enough guys on the yeah. field. Oh, Nebraska didn't have anybody on the field. And they had about six men, and they just did get a timeout. He didn't set the ball, said Bo Pelini, with a couple of other words mixed in. He has an explosive temper. Sean McDonough, Matt Millen, Janine Edwards back in Lincoln, Nebraska. Bo Pelini upset. They had to use a timeout. They didn't have anywhere near enough men on the field as Ohio State was about to punt. They're going to punt again, fourth and 18. Buchanan, one of the best in the country so far this year, dropping it inside the 20. Well done. There's 13 punts coming in inside the 20. Almost twice as many as anybody else in the Big Ten. Bo Pelini was upset at the officials, but he shouldn't have been. No, you're going to watch the, the umpire's job is to get the ball set. And then he goes back and waits for the referee to put it in play. He'll do that by pointing at him. There's the ball down. Now he looks. See him going back right there, right here. See? Yep, right ready there. Ready for play. Now it's ready for play. Now the umpire would come back. He should raise his hand, and it's ready. And there it is. But Nebraska wasn't ready. That could be a costly timeout. From the nine, Martinez slides down at the 20 yard line. Boy, he does that a lot. I know they don't have much behind him and he doesn't want to get hit, but you wonder if sometimes he leads, leaves yards on the field. Yeah, that time he did. In fact, he was short of that first down. Nine yard gain. They marked him down just shy of the 19. About a half yard to go. As the clock runs down to 13 minutes left. Ohio State once led 27-6. Burkhead weaves his way across the 25. Tyler Moeller the tackle. First down, Nebraska. And a great duo in the Nebraska ground game. Both Martinez and Burkhead ran for over 900 yards last year. Martinez keeps 
gets near the 30. They've combined for 199 yards per game as a duo this year rushing, one of the best tandems in the nation. You know, Sean, one of the things I think we forget because Taylor Martinez had such a big year a year ago is that he's just a sophomore. Mm -hmm. And his best football is coming. He's, he's getting better as we go. He's gotten better from a week ago to now. Takes to Burkhead. Throws a sinker. Too low for Ben Cotton, the tight end. At the 42 with Etienne Sabino in coverage. It will be third down and six. His greatest area to get better will be in his mechanics of throwing. And he knows it. Yeah, he stepped with the wrong foot there. I mean, he's stepping forward with his right foot yeah. as he threw the ball, it seemed. Third and six. Pistol formation. Martinez has a big family. He's the oldest of seven children. Five boys. He has a younger brother, Drake, who's already been offered a scholarship out of the Luna Beach High School in California. He's a junior there. Martinez in trouble. Almost went down. Stays on his feet. Lofts it up. Caught by Kinney. Short of the first down. Bradley Roby made the stop. About three yards shy of the marker. And they'll have to punt with under 12 minutes to go. They'll force this punt. But the one other point I'd like to make, you're going to watch Martinez. He keeps his balance. He's only been playing quarterback for three and a half years. This is the fourth. So it's three years and so many games so there's a running back in safety until his junior year in high school he played quarterback for a lot of his redshirt season here he was a wide receiver on the scout team not a great punt by Maher he had a couple go off the right side of his foot tonight and they'll mark that at the 27 yard line Homecoming in Lincoln, Nebraska on a warm and rainy night. First Big Ten home game for Nebraska. Taking on Ohio State. The Buckeyes lead 27-20. Joe Bosserman beginning his second full series at quarterback. And that is an incomplete pass. He got hit as he threw. After a moment's hesitation, Levante David in there again. Sean, this is the first time that we have seen the blitzing like there was a week ago. A week ago, Michigan State, this Ohio State offensive line struggled with A-gap blitzes. This time they walked up and they were successful because they struggled again on the inside. David got the hit. Bosserman hands it off to Hall. Heading in the other direction, he gets two to the 29. It'll be a big third down and eight with 11-10 on the clock running remaining. They've had two first downs since Bosserman came into the ball game. He is considered the better pure thrower of the two, and it doesn't look like Braxton Miller's going to be able to return tonight. Right now, if I'm Nebraska, I would tighten my coverage on the outside because they, their receivers struggle with getting off bump, and I'd bring some pressure. Bosman's one out of six throwing. And no pressure. Deep throw by Bosman way over the head of Devin Smith. And Sean, they did tighten up their pressure. They jumped their underneath coverage on the top side. They did a good job of going to man to man up top. You watch coming out down here. Here's a nice tight coverage here. Now he's playing off down below. He got away with one, but that ball just wasn't even close. There's Ben Buchanan to punt again. Right now, Sean, this crowd feels Abdullah. They know he has big play in him. Buchanan punting into the breeze. And Abdullah caught it at the 29 and got hit immediately. Ryan Shazer, the That's backup it. linebacker, with excellent coverage of that punt. Let's take a look now at another Pacific Life game summary. It was 27-6 in the third quarter. Ohio State, Braxton Miller had a nice night going when he injured his ankle late in the third quarter. Hides rush for 88, including a 63-yard touchdown. 
Time for that Ohio State defense to be what they're supposed to be. Martinez, design roll. Whoa! Maybe that's why he slides. He was about to slide, and Christian Bryant just ran right through him, Sean. Watch him slow up at the end of this run. You have got to be more decisive than this. Get down or oh. keep running. Don't stop. Yeah, it's almost like you decide, okay, maybe I won't slide this time, but just stopping was not the good alternative <laughs> to the slide. Gain of nine. Burkhead, the quick hitter. First down, drives to the 45-yard line. Andrew Sweat made the tackle. I like that Burkhead kid. I, I, think, he's, I think he's an underrated player. They've done a nice job bottling him up tonight, just 33 yards on 16 carries. It is pouring rain now, harder than it has all night long. Burkhead again. Gets a block from Legate, the fullback, and gets chopped down after he picked up a first down by Christian Bryant. Ball marked at the 41 of Ohio State, a 14-yard run for Burkhead. Spencer Long also does himself another nice job getting out there on the edge, and Legate, like you said, that was the main block. And movement prior to the snap well, of the offense. Offense number 78. Five-yard penalty, still first down. Marcel Jones. Me and Marcel Jones. <laughs> you can't do that. Uh, well, See? he can't do that, and neither can you, <laughs> by the way, from now on. <laughs> He's a big man, Marcel Jones. Yeah, That's it's just it's a momentum killer, though. 6 7 3 20. First and 15. Martinez turns the corner and gets wrestled back by Etienne Sabino at the top of the pile. Garrett Goble at the bottom of the pile. The penalties a problem for Nebraska. Last year they set the school record for penalties and penalty yards. Bo Pelini made fixing that a priority this year, but they had nine penalties last week at Wisconsin. Six tonight. On second and 12, Martinez throws, caught by Kyler Reed. He lunges down to the 34-yard line. It'll bring up a third down and three with under eight and a half minutes to go in Ohio State. Now clinging to a seven-point lead, a gain of nine. Sean, I really like with Tim Beck, the offensive coordinator for Nebraska, what he's done tonight with his game plan. He's taken a couple of shots. We said he had to do that. One resulted in a big touchdown. But the intermediate game, he's tailored things to Taylor Martinez. That'd be four down territory here. Agreed. And as a result, they go to the run. Martinez has the first down just beyond the marker near the 30-yard line. This might be the best game that I've seen Taylor Martinez play. And in a, in a big game, under pressure. He's thrown for 161. He's rushed for 75. Martinez with Simon after him. Dumps it off. Burkett a nice move. Burkett up the sideline. Touchdown. on that one Sean the first one is Taylor Martinez and the second one is Burkhead's great move out in the flat now the extra point to tie it Brett Maher Ooh, good hold by Cassidy momentary bobble they haven't missed a PAT all year and they still have it but that was an anxious moment 21 unanswered points by the Cornhuskers. Tied up, middle of the fourth quarter. Memorial Stadium rocking Nebraska 21 unanswered points. We're tied at 27. Stay tuned after the game for your late local news on most of these ABC stations and over on ESPN. You can catch Sports Center post game analysis of this game. And all of today's scores and highlights. 
Brett Maher kicks off with the wind. Down to the goal line to Jordan Hall. And he's driven back just after he crossed the 20. Let's go back and look at the touchdown by Burkhead that has knotted up this game. Well, we gave, there were two, two elements in this anatomy of this touchdown, and the first one is right here. It's going to be Taylor Martinez buying time. Looks down the field, comes back the other way, and his ability to buy that little bit of time, and then Burkhead is point number two. He just makes a miss like we talked about. Christian Bryant, he uses his speed against him and then takes it in to the end zone. Underrated that Burkhead kid. Boy, I like him. Martinez ran for 16 on that drive and passed for 39, including the 30-yard touchdown to the junior from Plano, Texas, Rex Burkhead. Bosserman in a quarterback. Carlos Hyde with running room and a first down for Ohio State. Chopped down at the 33-yard line by Stanley Jean-Baptiste. All night long, Ohio State has been using Nebraska's speed against them. They'll start one way and then redirect. And Carlos Hyde has his own speed. He's a big man, like you said, 240 pounds. He can run. He's up to exactly 100 yards rushing now. Hyde powers ahead for five more. Jared Crick on the stop and lost a helmet. We're just going to good old-fashioned Ohio State football here. Shame for them that Braxton Miller got hurt because his dual threat skills were causing problems. They really lose the running element from the quarterback position without Miller in the game. You know, Sean, you mentioned Jared Crick and losing his helmet there, but you and I watched him a few weeks ago, and he does not look to be the same player as we saw just a few weeks ago. He's not as decisive as he's been. He's not disengaging off the blocks like he had been. There's something, something's not quite right with him. You know, he took a hit in the head in that game against Washington and was in a lot of distress after that game. Didn't play the following week at Wyoming. Second and six. Blazerman throwing deep, looking for Brown. It's intercepted. Stanley Jean Baptiste. He's only been on defense for three weeks. The converted wide receiver with his first career interception. Looking just like a wide receiver, Sean. And remember, we talked about his great length. And this is where it's an advantage. Watch him track. Eyes are where they have to be. Now the ball's in the air. That long reach of his is able, that's the difference in the play. He's a rare, he's rare in that he's so long, he's six foot three inches, he's running stride for stride, and a great play brought down with his, with his big reach. Second turnover by Ohio State. The first one was the play that turned the ball game around and Levante David just ripped the ball away for Nebraska. Martinez, late pitch, a one-handed catch by Burkhead. He's in trouble and swung down for a loss. Back at the 17, flagged down near the line of scrimmage. Etienne Sabino made the tackle for Ohio State. Offside, number 50, defense lined up in the neutral zone. Five yards from the previous spot. Repeat, first down. J.T. Moore, the defensive end. Redshirt freshman from Boardman, Ohio. Everything going against Luke Fickle. I think he'll have a question to answer if it continues to go this way. Why didn't he kick the field goal when it was going to be a 49-yarder? Could have given them a 10-point lead. <laughs> Martinez across the 40. They grabbed his face mask as well. Flag down. He's down. Two late flags are thrown after Martinez hit the turf at the 45-yard line. Taylor Martinez has taken this game over in the second half. Personal foul, face mask, defense number four. 15 yards from the end of the run, automatic first down. C.J. Barnett, they'll tack 15 onto the end of an 18-yard run. The first part of this is watch the mesh point, now watch his eyes. That's his key. Whatever he does, he's going to do opposite. And he does a great job of riding that thing, making the defender come up the field, and then he takes it back inside. 
Really well done. Toss back to Burkhead. Legate the fullback. Throws another block. Burkhead down the sideline. Out of bounds inside the 20. They're going to mark him out at the 18. C.J. Barnett another tackle. 22-yard run for Nebraska. Did I mention that I like Rex Burkhead? <laughs> this kid is strong. He's got good speed. He's a heck of a good player. They're in field goal position. Burkhead again. Nothing there that time. Travis Howard, the corner, held his ground. Now it's time for this Ohio State defense, which has not played poor. The second half, they've not played as well as they did in the first half. But it's time for their players, and their best player in this defense is John Simon, 54. Steady dose of Burkhead. Finds a seam inside the 10. Touchdown! Sean, this whole second half, it's been a different, look at the gate, another block outside on the top by the receiver, number 80, Kenny Bell. Brandon Kenny also does a good job, but watch him finish. Rex Burkhead. They're going to check to see, Sean. He left the field inbounds, and you have to see if the ball crosses the plane. It looked from that angle like he did, but they'll check it. Steve Newman is the replay official. There's the push. He launches himself. Yeah, he's inside yeah, he's, the pylon. He's through the pylon. What a great effort. Well, a guy who gives you an effort on every play. The fans here love Rex Burkhead. And what's not to like? Terrific young man. Good student. Well-respected citizen. Janine Edwards will tell us the story about the relationship he's formed with a six-year-old boy here who's battling yes. cancer. And that was the first thing that Rex talked to us about yesterday. And he has had the knack as Burkhead this year, particularly of performing in the second half. After further review, the ruling on the field of touchdown is confirmed. Taylor Martinez and Rex Burkhead have been the difference in the second half. And also, Sean, this offensive line has picked it up. They've been getting a hat on a hat, and they've been able to get on the edge, and that's been the difference. First lead of the night for Nebraska. Maher trying to make it a seven-point edge, and it is. 17 yards for Burkhead to complete a 78-yard drive in just four plays. He's rushed for 83 yards in the second half. Martinez has rushed for 84. We mentioned earlier the magic number for Nebraska is 200 yards rushing the last two years, 0-5 when they don't get there, and it didn't look like they were going to get there tonight. They're up to 204 yards rushing now. Here's Janine Edwards. Well, Sean, you just mentioned a little boy is up in Boston watching this game tonight. His name is Jack Hoffman, and Rex Burkhead is wearing a red bracelet that says Team Jack, pray. Jack Hoffman is six years old. He has a brain tumor. And the day after tomorrow, Monday, in Boston, he'll be having yet another brain surgery. Rex met Jack recently and was so moved by his story. Little Jack is a huge Burkhead fan. And Rex said, as soon as he's out of surgery on Monday at some point, he will be giving Little Jack a call. Well, he has to be enjoying what he's seeing here tonight. Hey, Jack, you picked a good guy to watch. Mm -hmm. And we'll all be saying up a little prayer for you, Holmes. Maher kicks off. Ohio State so impressive on offense for two and a half quarters. Can they refind it? As the momentum in this game has swung dramatically against them. 
Courtney Osborne made the tackle on the return by Jordan Hall. Here's tonight's big picture brought to you by Sony. The Red River rivalry, the featured game of the day, two unbeaten. And Oklahoma, number one in one poll, number three in the other, made a case for number one, as did LSU. 24 unanswered points out of the gate. They went at home over Florida. And Illinois, when it runs up 6-0, their best start in 60 years. Good for Ron Zook. That's a good football coach, and he's got that team playing really well. A position coach for Bo Pelini. And Zook was an assistant at Ohio State, and Pelini was a defensive back. Bill Bozerman with five minutes to go, has to pull it down. They got there with four, and it'll be a loss of a yard on the play. They got there with four because they had good coverage all the way around. That's a coverage sack. Rome's able to get there. But there's no place to go. Look at the top side. Safety sitting on the inside. Well done by Austin. And then here's the top. It's a cut coverage. Everywhere you look, there was coverage. Officially the first sack of the night allowed by Ohio State after they yielded nine to Michigan State. 4.25 to go on second and 11. Again, Bozerman can't find anybody open. Throws it up for grabs and complete. Will Compton had great coverage, Sean. They tried a wheel route down the right side. Again, good coverage. They cannot get separation. Bozerman has to roll to his right. He tries to make that throw. Compton's right on top of it. And we could see from high atop Memorial Stadium just blanket coverage all the yep. way around. You can't blame Bozerman there. Nobody open. He's one for nine in relief of Braxton Miller. You have to think Devere Posey would have made a difference. But suspended and not able to play again tonight. Their leading returning wide receiver. Third and 11. Bozerman. Deep ball. Out of bounds. Deep, wobbly, no chance for Devin Smith. And even had it been a good throw, Dennard was right on top. These receivers, we said it early, they struggle getting separation. And this route is no different. Dennard was waiting on the throw. All the underneath stuff, same thing. You're right, Sean. Devere Posey, they need him. And they're not going to get him for another four games. Ohio State with lots of time left, relatively speaking. Three timeouts came out winging it. Three straight pass attempts. Sack of two incomplete passes, and here's Buchanan to punt. Fair catch signaled by Rex Burkhead. They want his sure hands back there. He caught it at the 33. 4.02 to go. The ball on a seven point lead for Nebraska. This week on ESPN's Monday Night Football, the Detroit Lions off to their first 4-0 start since 1980 host Chicago, the Bears and Lions. Monday Night Football on ESPN at 8.30 with coverage starting at 7. Monday Night Countdown served by Applebee's. You can watch the game streaming live on WatchESPN.com. They've actually won eight straight games dating back to last year. Rex Burkhead out to the 38-yard line. He got five on first down. Nebraska just trying to kill the clock now. All three timeouts left for Ohio State. Under four minutes to go. And all of a sudden, this offensive line has been providing some room for Rex Burkhead. Remember, the first half, they couldn't, they couldn't get anything. And now, Caputo inside, Rodriguez. You can see all of them. Marcel Jones, Spencer Long, 61, Hardrick, 50. They are getting on... Hat on a hat, as you like to say, assignment football and allowing Burkhead to pick his spots. Martinez lets the play clock run down to three. Burkhead in trouble behind the line of scrimmage and buried by Michael Bennett. Good penetration there as well by John Simon. Well, blow up the play. Good timeout. And a timeout called by Luke Fickle. Yeah, that's, that's a good timeout, and that was a nice job coming off the edge. They brought a little pressure off the top side, Chuck. Well, it was 27 to 6, and Ohio State had the ball in the third quarter. The crowd was totally out of it. And then Levante David with the takeaway just ripped it away from Braxton Miller. They capitalized and scored a quick touchdown. The first of four unanswered touchdowns scored by Nebraska. 28 zip, the scoring run for the Corn Huskers. Ooh. 
We're looking at an 0 and 2 conference start for just the second time since 1968. If it continued to go the way it was they still haven't put this in the win column yet. But before that play midway through the third quarter they had just 133 yards of offense. They've just about doubled that total in the time since. I've always thought that this game of football is so fun. The one play can make a difference in a series which can make a difference in a game. Losing Braxton Miller also hurt. Martinez got very close to the marker and then a flag thrown. Looked like they're going to mark him almost right on the edge of that yellow line. I also think they're going to tax him on to the end. Personal foul. Defense number 26. 15 yards from the end of the run. Automatic first down. Tyler Moeller. Jim Haycock, the defensive coordinator there. Was next to Luke Fickle. Very upset about this development as well he should be. Oh yeah, leading with the helmet. Mm. Although it's number two, Christian Bryan, who comes in with the helmet. Not 26, Moeller, against whom they announced it. You know, that's that's a tough call there, Sean, mm -hmm. because now he's, he's now he's a runner right there. So if that was Rex Burkhead, they wouldn't throw that flag. 75 yards and penalties tonight. They're in Ohio State territory. Burkhead, he got walloped again. Yeah, right in the head. At the 39-yard line. And Ohio State uses its second timeout with 2.34 to go. One timeout left for the Buckeyes tomorrow night on ESPN. Join Reese Davis, Kirk Herbstreit, Craig James, and Robert Smith for BCS Countdown as they project who will top the first BCS poll of the season before it's unveiled next Sunday. BCS Countdown presented by Allstate tomorrow night, 8.15 Eastern on ESPN. Continuing on ESPNU at 9 Eastern. Well, you can make a case for a number of teams. It's LSU, Alabama, and Oklahoma foremost in the conversation. Who do you think should be number one at this juncture? Yeah, well, see, I, Oklahoma started at the top, and there's a lot that goes with being the number one team and then performing. They have not done anything to change my mind. LSU and Alabama are playing good football. They're going to play themselves. Oklahoma is going to be in the middle of this thing right at the very end. So who should be number one? To me, team? I take Oklahoma. They're number three in the coaches' poll. They're number one in the coaches' poll, rather, number three in the AP poll that you just saw. Historically, that's an unusual difference between the two polls. Burkhead has another first down, it appears. And if that is where they mark it, and they do well beyond the line, that is a huge step towards salting it away for the Cornhuskers. A fresh set of downs and only one timeout left for the Buckeyes. Sean, two guys put this team on their shoulders in the second half. Taylor Martinez and Rex Burkhead. And I would add Levante David. And Levante David changed the whole scenario. Yeah, he, David played a heck of a football game. A lot of pressure was on Taylor Martinez all week long. Boy, he really responded. Burkhead just wants to make sure now that he doesn't turn the ball over. 152, the clock stops. The Buckeyes are out of timeouts as they use their third and final of the second half. Stay tuned after our game tonight for the Ford wrap-up show with Robert Flores. Rex Burkhead had just 10 yards rushing at the half. Well, what was so impressive about Burkhead is the way he finishes runs, number one, and then he's got such great versatility. He made a big play catching the ball. He made big plays running inside, running outside. But it's just the consistency. Not an overly fast guy, not an overly powerful guy, just a great combination of everything. Five receptions are a career high. And he's up to 101 yards, rushing his third 100-yard game of the season. 78 yards rushing in the fourth quarter for Burkhead and a 30-yard TD reception. And here he comes again. Another first down. 
That'll seal it for Nebraska. John, you don't think he's that fast, and then you see him just running away from people. And what a great, has great vision. They have him at the fullback spot this time. Look at it, just the nice quick movements inside. And he's a quality player. One hundred and nineteen yards after the eighteen yard run. And for a long time tonight, few would have imagined that both Polini's team would be in the victory formation. But they are. And he'll earn a victory over his alma mater. That's a quality win. And for Luke Fickle, they're going to be sick because they had them right where they wanted them. But I got to tell you, Levante David stripping the ball, changed the course of the game, and then Taylor Martinez and Rex Burkhead took it from there. This is going to be the largest margin overcome for victory in Nebraska history. From 21 back to win against an Ohio State team that for two and a half quarters was putting on by far its most impressive performance of the season. So Nebraska with the victory will go to five and one. They'll earn their first victory as a member of the Big Ten Conference. One and one in conference play and the Buckeyes will go to three and three overall. Oh and two in conference play for the first time since 2004. When they started 0 and 3, that was the last year that the Buckeyes did not win at least a share of the Big Ten title. Taylor Martinez threw for 191 and two touchdowns. He ran for 102 and a score. Burke had ran for 119 and a touchdown and had a touchdown receiving as well. Best game I've seen Martinez play. Especially responding to what they came through a week ago. He knew he had to play well, Sean, and he came he came through. At the big time, big times of the game, he played big. Well, Bo Pelini said all week long and again at the half with Janine Edwards, we need to fix us. Looked like they found some solutions in that second half, and he's with Janine. Bo, con congratulations, Bo. When we spoke at halftime, you said, you know what? We need to fix us. We have some things to work on. What made it work in this second half? Well, I just think we did just that. I, our kids, I'm proud of our football team. I'm proud of how they fought. Uh, we weren't perfect, but, uh, you know, I thought Coach Beck called a great game in the second half. Our offense got it going. Our defense made some stops. And you know what? I'm just proud of the care. I've been saying we got a lot of character on this football team, and I'm proud of them. We got a lot better. We got to get a lot better, but they hung in there. Taylor Martinez had a tough week after last week's game. How did you assess his attitude in the locker room at halftime? Taylor has a lot of confidence in himself, and I think he showed out there why he's our quarterback. Great job. And, guys, it was the largest comeback in school history here for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Yeah, he might have had a tough week with the media and some fan reaction. He didn't have a tough night on the field, oh, even he early did. on. I mean, he was right on target his first 10 passes. It wasn't going well for the team, but they found a rhythm on offense after the big play on defense by David turned the game around. Final score, Nebraska 34 and Ohio State 27. Now for Matt Millen. Janine Edwards and our entire crew, led ably by producer Bo Garrett and director Mike Roy. Sean McDonough saying so long from Lincoln, Nebraska. Now Robert Flores with the Ford wrap-up. <laughs>